Catherine McPhee rose to international fame on season five of American Idol at the age of 21. Since wowing the judges on the talent competition, she's become a popular recording artist and a sought after actress with a current gig on CBS's Scorpion and her former gig, well loved by theater fans, Smash. Now she's hit Broadway with an irresistible turn as pie maker Jenna in Sarah Bareilles' Waitress. Hear why McPhee wanted to take on the role, her early musical theater triumphs, her thoughts on Smash season three, and more on this week's Show People. Catherine, thank you for coming in. Thank you for having me. Let me just start by gushing right off the bat. I saw your very, very first performance on Broadway. Yeah, you did. Which, I'm sorry, that was kind of unfair. <laughs> that was kind of unfair of me. But you blew me away. Oh my gosh, So thank fantastic you. in this show. Thank you. I, I, I'm so thrilled that you're on Broadway. How are you feeling? I'm thrilled. The show, what they call it a very prop heavy show. Yeah. So the, nothing prepares you more than just rehearsals, you know, to try and just yeah. get all that kind of stuff to be automatic and not let it throw you. Yeah, I was actually nervous for you to, that opening number. There was a lot of Because you knew. I was really paying attention before. to all your prop work. Yeah, <laughs> and actually it went okay that first number. There was a couple shows later where like prop things <laughs> went wrong so i was lucky that that first night like most of the prop things went okay and to get to hear you sing that score Aww. is so incredible Thanks. i would love another a new cast album i would love just a whole new album of you singing this music oh well i don't know if i'll be able to make that happen but <laughs> <laughs> so this is a show you've sort of been thinking about for a while i know yeah. that like a year ago there was sort of a, a, a possibility of you coming right. to do it they had asked my interest you know and i knew the music vaguely but then i sort of immersed myself in it and yeah. I was suddenly obsessed with the show mm -hmm. and really wanted to do it and then Sarah decided to take over for Jesse, right. which like, you know, is a natural, right. you know, kind of move for her and so it kind of disappeared and so I Sarah was like, sorry Kat McPhee, even if you're interested, I'm going to do it. I don't think she had any idea. I was <laughs> even, a, even a part of the situation um, and rightfully so, she should go and make her Broadway debut and a yeah. show she so beautifully contributed to. Yeah. Then a year later, they literally just offered me the role. So, you know, and Sarah and I, we had just done some SAG after a charity event in mm -hmm. Los Angeles where we were both singing in it. And she said she heard me sing from the green room, like when I was just in rehearsal. And I think she was, she said she was impressed, which was so sweet. So I think that like, you know, I think it helped me get the gig. I don't know, you know, right. I'm sure she has a lot of influence and in decision making on the show. So, yeah. So yeah, they asked me like last December and I was a hundred percent in just because the music and the story and um, and then of course I was like I hope Drew is going to be in the show because he'd come back into the show right because you know to get to, Gailing, get, to get to work with some of the original people who created those roles and his yeah. voice is so amazing and you were like I was on Smash so I guess I need to do Broadway that's right I mean it seems like it was sort of like on your must list yeah well you know when I came off Idol a lot of the idols at that time, it was like a natural progression for them to go do some show mm -hmm. on Broadway. And I I had gotten offered to do some shows. I mean, if I'm being honest, like I'd gotten offered, but I, I turned um, them down because I really, I just didn't feel like they it was gonna be special like mm -hmm. enough for me or something that I was really passionate about. Mm -hmm. And I wanted it to be something that really made me excited and that was going to make my Broadway debut, my experience, really exciting and memorable. Mm -hmm. And it just didn't feel like the opportunity arise until this show, you right. know, and I'm just so happy it did. Right. It's a great acting role, too. It's a great acting role. I mean, the journey role. of Jenna is right. epic. Right. I mean, literally, my mom and I were, my mom was gushing, of course, because mothers do. I saw you your know. mom at the first performance. She by was the in way, a sparkly dress. She was very excited. Mission. Actually, did. my friend Heather Lee was with me, and then she came back from the She's ladies' room during the mission. She said, I just met Kat's mom. She's very cute. <laughs> she was She's very excited. so excited, <laughs> so proud. But, you know, we were just talking about the show and the role, and she was like, God, that Jenna is such an amazing human. Like, she's just such an amazing human to portray because she's so flawed and so imperfect, but so beautifully courageous. And um, so I'm very honored to play her and tell her story. Actually, anyone who knew you from American Idol knew your mom right off the bat. I mean, well, like, yeah. I, I reminded myself, you know, they have on, on YouTube, like you can watch a your rewind. whole American Idol journey I'm sure. in one video, which is amazing. Oh, it's, some people come up to me and say like, oh, I should watch that on you. I'm like, no, please don't. Please don't. <laughs> I was 21 years old. I'm, I was very amateur and no, very it was, goofy. No, it was actually a great reminder of why I really fell for you. Um, I mean, I was a big fan of yours on Idol. And, and yeah, I'm sure it's weird to see yourself as 21, like yeah. everyone watch you. It's just like bubbly and goofy. And yeah. Not that I'm not still bubbly, but just right. like 
Calm it down, girl. <laughs> Calm down, girl. Calm it down, girl. <laughs> but but we knew your mom was a vocal coach, right? Yeah. And she's worked yeah. on Idol since. Yeah, she worked on it after I was off the show. But yeah. my sister went to go work on the show. Right. I mean, it's been a whole like. Right. Family. I mean, I've literally had less to do with Idol post Idol than, than they have. Yeah, they're like, they've had way more. <laughs> when you take on something like this, is your mom, uh, does she help? I don't no, know. Is, actually, it, is it a new world for you um, to sing a Broadway score like sure, this? Sure, it is. I mean, it's more just like the the stamina and knowing what you can yeah. tolerate and this, that, and the other. But my mom's best friend, Christina Saffron, uh -huh. who has been on Broadway many, many times. And she, I think she was on Broadway the, the first time when she was like 17. Oh, wow. I think in Chorus Line or something. And she's an amazing singer and voice teacher. So it's my mom's best friend who I was studying with just to like get me ready and prepared mm -hmm. before I came to New York to start rehearsals. So. It was like my mom was the one who encouraged me to go see Christina because she'll help you. It's easier when it's like not your mom. Right, of um, course, of course. But she's she's always great when I'm like, I'm tired, can you warm me up? And she's... <laughs> <laughs> I love that you posted uh, on social media, you're going to be giving the gays everything they want. <laughs> yeah. That, is this something that you worry about, making sure you're giving the gays everything they want? It's just a fun thing. Like I've had so <laughs> many fans over the years come up to me and say like, Girl, when are you gonna do Broadway? And like, they're the ones who taught me about like snatching the wig and all that, all that stuff that I don't even. I'm not cool enough to even really <laughs> know. Um, so I'm just, I'm just being playful, you know. So now that you're actually doing a Broadway show and you're in the Broadway world, was there anything realistic about Smash? <laughs> yeah, I mean, a lot of it feels very uh, nostalgic, just because we had, you know, just being on the stage uh -huh. when we were shooting. Right. We, it's, it was like doing a musical. Yeah, you shot you know? a lot of it. Like in, I went to that theater you went to in Staten, Staten Island. Island. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and we had like the most amazing lighting designer, the dancers, and it. it the, other than like saying cut, when you were up there doing those scenes, like it really felt. Also, like the stairwell in the theater. I remember those sh epic shots we'd have of like the backstage going from the stage of what was actually happening on on yeah. in front of the audience, and then panning to the wings with the stage managers and people running up in the stairwell. It's like all that. It's right. totally. So all that is kind of coming to that, life now. Yeah, that is your really life is. now. Yeah. So what you were shooting as a TV show is now your life. Yeah, that's it is. Weird. It's that's what like the whole fun thing about Smash, it just has this second life or third life, you right. know, it just kind of keeps popping up. And I text Megan Hilty because she came and saw the show yeah. this last weekend. And I said to her, I was like, does it surprise you that people are still so, you know, like I put that tweet out, like, if you don't love me at this, then you don't love me now. Right. Yes. Um, which obviously, <laughs> and people are like, she's throwing shade to Smash. I'm like, I'm not throwing shade. I'm like saying, clearly, if like Smash was so amazing, then you're not going to love me now. Um, <laughs> but I, she said, yeah, I mean, you know, it's just they just they just axed it too soon and they didn't give it a chance yeah. to. You well, know, you that made a promise on Twitter. <laughs> I did. You said thirty thousand retweets. I'm causing ruckus. So yeah. I, I love that you have that. You never know. There's Netflix now. There's yeah. There's a lot of ways to make a season three. Right. Exactly. <laughs> okay, we're gonna take a quick break and we'll be back with more Catherine McPhee. back with Catherine McPhee, who is on Broadway in Waitress. I'm on Broadway. Smash fans rejoice. <laughs> <laughs> We're waiting for you. Can we talk about Annie Get Your Gun? <gasps> oh my gosh. <laughs> Can we please talk about that? Because, okay. Did you try to find clips from like I, I, 15 years ago? Oh, I tried ago? really hard. I did find a great clip of you singing Sondheim at Boston Conservatory. You did? You, you drive a person oh crazy. Oh my gosh, The right. freshman review. Right. Okay, we're going to talk about all this. Do -do -do -do. Do -do -do. Yeah. Wow, you really dug, huh? That, yeah, that's out there. I, like I said, I knew you from American Idol. Right. You did. Ne you never really mentioned on American Idol that you actually were kind of like a musical theater girl at yeah. that point. Yeah. It's it's kind of hard because they had like done a lot of focus on me and my mom, and we kind of played it up. If I'm being honest, you can right. look back. We played it up like, oh, my mom's a voice teacher. She's a stage man. She's yeah. a stage mom, but yeah. she really wasn't. My mom actually, my mom was the one who was like, no, you have to wait till you're older. I don't want you to blow out on being a performer when you're really little. So she was not a stage. She mom. really wasn't. Okay. I've actually looked back and I'm like, that was really mean. I made you look like a stage mother. <laughs> Poor mom. But you know. Like, it worked for the story. It worked for the story. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, I think I probably said in interviews, like, oh, I just, I went to college for three semesters, whether they feature that or not. Right, but I went right. to school at Boston Conservatory for three semesters. I studied theater, uh, musical theater, and I loved it. I made, I still am friends with the same people who I dormed with and uh -huh. 
I learned a lot of great stuff, great teachers. But when I left school, yeah. I did Annie at Your Gun. Right. I auditioned the for Music Theater. the Cambria, which is a big, beautiful theater in Thousand Oaks. Yeah. They do some good shows there. Yeah, that's a good, that's, that's a good gig. Yeah, and I auditioned for it. it was you like got a award nomination. I did. That's yes. right. Yeah, <laughs> I did. I was 20 years old, and I opened the Backstage West, and I said, sure, I'm going to audition for it. And I had been told, like, you know, there are quite a few equity women who were auditioning for it, and I was an equity, and I thought, well, at least I'll get in the ensemble, and they gave me Annie. <laughs> so I got Annie, and Annie Get Your Gun. And I mean, that's a big, juicy it role. It was a big deal, yeah, and it was really the last starring role I did on the stage before I did my Broadway debut. Right, I know. It was crazy. I didn't even know that 14 that years later, yeah. Yeah, and I know that, I know that theater, and I was very impressed. I was like, wow, she landed that. Yeah, I forgot I got an LA Ovation Award for that. Yep. That's, or nomination. Yep. Yeah, that's yeah. right. How were you? Um, I think I was quite good <laughs> in that role. I'm quick on the trigger with targets not much bigger. Dun, 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 right? Oh, I always keep playing girls with little southern accents, too. <laughs> okay, so rewind. So you grew up in Sherman Oaks, California, which is my favorite this is my favorite name of a, a L.A. suburb. Really? I just love that name, Sherman Oaks. Sherman it seems Oaks. very, like, classic. Right. Classic California place right. to live. So when did you discover musical theater? Did you see shows my as a My mom uh, was always doing regional productions of a Showboat. Oh, and wow. so I, from very, very little, I remember my mom was out of town and my dad got my sister and myself into the car. We drove like somewhere up in Northern California and um, watched the show. And I remember having a panic attack because they cut her hand in the show. You're talking about Showboat? Yeah, the yeah. black versus white. Who she play? She played... Uh, Julie? N Julie. Julie, He's yeah. He's just my bill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. yeah. And then she did Man of La Mancha for quite a few productions. So she was, um, she was she Aldonza. Was, yeah. Which is kind of like, yeah. was she like a prostitute? Yeah. Aldonza, yeah, so you a saw prostitute. your mom just like full out. I never really loved that show, but I had to see it a lot. <laughs> yeah, you, okay, so I you saw those two shows. Those are like your, the two shows you know the most. I know them very well. <laughs> she did a couple other shows, but those are like the ones that I remember. So I just remember my parents didn't really take us to movies very much, but they would take us to see theater. Uh -huh. And my sister was obsessed with Broadway. I had no idea like what was like, I didn't really understand the concept of Broadway. Like what does that mean? Is it a right. street? Is it a, um, <laughs> right. but she wanted to do Broadway. And so I wanted to be on Broadway too, cause she wanted that. So it was right. like for those, those real sort of influential years of my life, I, I knew I wanted to do some sort uh -huh. of capacity of Broadway. So was there theater at Notre Dame High School? Sure was. Okay. When I got really serious about acting, like the craft of acting, was in high school. My uh, theater director at Notre Dame High School, which is a very, very heavy, athletic-driven okay. school, uh -huh. but was amazing because we had this little gem of a theater program led by Judy Weldon, who I think she's retired now. She was such a huge influence, and she was the most amazing drama teacher and actually I went to quite a f like f well known people graduated from my school but Rami Malek he's a really great actor he's actually been quoted in a couple interviews talking about what, how in how influential oh, wow. Judy Weldon was and it's true like she her program was just we'd do these movement classes and exploring the characters and journaling and you know she really just got you into like the the excitement of exploring a character right my freshman year it was once upon a mattress. Okay. And addition, I got into the ensemble, which I remember it was like a big deal. I felt really cool. Okay. Cool. Because like all the older kids were like, "Wow, you must be really good because you <laughs> got in." And I was like, "Oh wow, well, you know, I'm just so excited to be in the ensemble." Just always trying to stay humble. And then sophomore year, I landed Little Red into the woods. Into the woods. Oh, yeah. You were Little and Red. I was Little Red. You no know things. Now. I wasn't so little. I was like tall. <laughs> right. But. I was, we had a great, cool production in this little black box theater. Uh -huh. And um, yeah, and I remember studying the original cast of Into the Woods with Bernadette Peters and that whole amazing London cast. Now you're on Broadway at the same time as Bernadette Peters. I know, it's Isn't so cool. Crazy? And then I ended up working with her on Smash and right. she loved my dogs and she's such <laughs> like an amazing dog person. <laughs> okay, so Into the Woods, any other school shows? Because clearly... We did some plays, which we, I can't remember the names of the okay. plays we did. She always picked some really, she never did like, you know, the stereotypical Grease. Like she always tried right. to kind of yeah. be, um, we did the Robert Bridegroom. Uh -huh, yeah. My senior, my junior year. Uh -huh. My senior year, we did Pajama Game. 
I played Babe, I think oh, yeah. it was. Okay. So you really rose up from the ensemble to I the lead. I sure did. And then <laughs> Your mom's going to send me video of every one of I your I wish we could find some of it. It'd be fun to. <laughs> I would love to see some of that. The problem is everything was, like, was cassette then. Yeah. So, know, or video cassette. And it's like, Don't worry, I'll pay to transfer you... it. Just send me all the tapes. Okay. <laughs> Send me whatever you have. My mom probably has it somewhere. <laughs> okay, that, that was a lot. I just got a lot of musical You got a lot of information. No, I love that. I love that because I didn't know any of that. But I have to tell you, it's everything that I ever learned from her that she would, you know, on our last final note sessions, like before our opening, you know, we'd go through and she would say these really important things that have stuck with me before I even opened on like Broadway, which is the top, you know? Mm -hmm. And just remember saying things like, never judge an audience. Every audience experiences a show a different way, which, by the way, everyone judges an audience. It's still like, oh, they're not as good tonight. Right. But she meant like, don't let it really affect you because they may not be, they may be smiling audience. You know, mm -hmm. they may not be a laugh mm -hmm. out loud audience. Right. Doesn't mean they don't enjoy it in the yeah. same way that somebody else does. And you know, if you get laughter and you're in the middle of your line, pause and fill it with, you know, some breathing and then pick up so they don't miss the line. Like all that stuff. Stayed with in you. high school, You're stayed with me. You're using all of it, not Using all of it. I love that. It. Yeah, and so it's amazing. really, it's it's really like my young, teenage self is kind of smiling because little did I know that it would see that turn into a career. Right. Okay. Awesome. We're gonna take a quick break. We'll be right back with more Catherine McPhee. back with Catherine McPhee. So clearly when you got to Boston Conservatory, you sort of knew musicals. Yeah. You knew of what course. you were doing. And yeah. you were like um, and you were like, I'm gonna study this. I knew musicals, but I I didn't know them as well as like some of the other kids who right. were in this my roommate, Jill Jockey, who's like still pursuing and just performing uh -huh. and just done tons of shows. And she was obsessed with thoroughly modern Millie and I became like obs obsessed with the, the score. I didn't yeah. know the show. Yeah, I love that show. And I ended up seeing it on the tour, which was amazing. But uh, Michael Michael Mayer, right. who I ended up working with on Smash, right, the Smash it. pilot and the, the whole series, right. he directed the, the original yeah. show of The Early Modern Millie. So I just kept slowly but surely falling more and more in love with the the magical greatness of Broadway, mm -hmm. I guess. Mm -hmm. But you didn't really necessarily know what your career. No, I didn't. Would be. I didn't really know if I would, if theater would be like the f first main thing I did. I mean, I tried for sure. Like, I remember when the auditions for Hairspray came into Boston, mm -hmm. and everyone went and auditioned for right. Bernie Telsey's office. They was Bernie's associate, and I was really wrong. I'm quite wrong for Hairspray. If I think right. it, you know, my voice is not quite right for it, I don't think. But um, and I didn't get into the show, but they actually had me, they wanted me to come into New York like that following week to audition for Aida. Oh. So I sang, I know the truth, I know. But that was like my first Broadway audition was oh. Aida. For my Anaris first. and Aida. Yeah. Oh wow, so while you were in Boston. And I didn't get it, but it was right. like, I felt like kind of a big deal because that was the first time right. Bernie Telsey's yeah. the whole group kind of knew about yeah. me. and Now they so all know you. They know now me they and they're so you. great. <laughs> but they remembered when, I, when we did Smash, they're like, oh, we remember you from Really? You know, from Aida. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow, see that? Yeah. Really? I was a little young to play that part. I was only yeah. 20 years old. So yeah, you can actually 19 years play old. it now if they do a revival. Yeah. Everyone I wants a revival it. of Aida. It's a, do they? Yeah, it's people, such all a the fans want, show. all the people watching this want a revival of Aida. I would love to do Aida. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Okay, let's sign Sounds her off. good. <laughs> do you have any other musical theater dream roles or do you not really think that way? I, I don't, I mean, I would love to do something original at yeah. some point, but. Thoroughly Modern Millie, that kind of thing where that kind of show, just a classic old Broadway show, uh -huh. you know, with a little bit of dancing. I'm, I mean, I'm definitely actress, singer first. I'm not right. a dancer first. <laughs> right. I would never claim to be, but I love always something to work for, so. Uh -huh. Right, so something new, to, maybe. Yeah, yeah, something new. Any ideas? I'm into that. So we got to talk about Smash a little bit yeah. because obviously the people are obsessed, especially Broadway.com viewers. I mean, this is a thing. People, yeah. and it's still a thing. It's going to follow you forever. You know, I got I got like quite ill about a year ago with the stomach flu, and I was in bed, and I just um, my friend was like, "I would never seen Smash," and I was like, "Just keeping me company," and and so we were laying in bed, and she was like, "Let's let's binge binge watch Smash," and I was like, "Oh wow, this really was a great show." Not that I didn't think it was, right. but when you're in it, you don't always catch every episode, or whatever. 
And I, I was so fun for me to binge watch. And I'm like, I understand why people still love it so much, yeah. you know? And you'll probably be doing photo ops with Megan Hilty for the rest of your life, which I hope we like. So. And she just came to see you in Waitress, as you mentioned. We love Megan Hilty. Amazing woman. And I love that like false rivalry between you guys. I, I think it's adorable. There's like no there's there's no rivalry at all. <laughs> oh, uh, and, and you were on Broadway for one night doing the the bombshell That's right. concert bombshell for concert. the Actors Fund, which was amazing. Yeah. Was that fun to sort of so that cast of the show? The was, cast is so epic. Yeah. It's just yeah. I remember when I got cast in it. And they said, well, Deborah Messing just signed on, and Angelica right. Houston just signed on. And I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> this is going to be insane. Yeah. Do you think like that Bombshell should be on Broadway or the hit you know, list? I or, don't or, see why it shouldn't or be. Or something. I mean, I have to say, Mark, Mark Shaman's got women's music and yeah. lyrics. I know. That music is so good. Yeah, I know. I mean, why? And if someone can make the story, the untold story of Marilyn or whatever, a story we haven't heard over and over again about her life yeah. or maybe about somebody uh, who knows but that music to go to waste is such a shame they really should I mean I don't know that I'm the right person for that show you right. know but I would be a hundred percent in support of them right. doing something you'd be there on opening night sure cheering them on yeah yeah posing for pictures of course uh, I want to be a producer why not so what would happen if, if if your retweet dream comes true what would happen on season three where would we be? Oh my gosh. Have you thought about Karen you know, and Ivy and what's happening? I have to talk to Christian Borrell because I know that he had written he had an, an idea? episode. He had he had an idea of where the show could go. Wow. And I it was so freaking brilliant. Uh, um and I, I can't remember because this was like five years ago now. Christian Borrell, you owe me an email. <sighs> I need the treatment. <laughs> wow. It was like really, really fascinating, like where the stories and characters could go. I mean, there were so many. I mean, it would have to take place like five years later. Right. Maybe. It ended with the Tonys. We all know that. Yeah. Yeah. Ivy won. Maybe someone goes to Hollywood. And I mean, there's right. so many, mm -hmm. so many things that you maybe could do. Maybe someone auditions for American Idol. Right. Maybe it just becomes your life. Maybe and they're, I, I, or maybe they're, you know, in LA on a, you know, working on a show and they're miserable and they, all they want to do is get back to Broadway. I mean, who knows? There's like right. a whole. There's so many things. There's so many things. So many do. things. And you know what's really cute is Jack Davenport is across the street Right, doing he's a show on Broadway too. And we're it's aiming H. to meet yeah. up this week after a show, like for oh. a drink, because he's like, I haven't seen him in five years or six years since the show ended. I haven't seen him in that crazy. long. So I'm going to do like a, when we get together, I'm going to do a little picture and make the scorpion. Scorpion fans, that's my other show. Uh, Smash <laughs> yeah. fans, yeah. like go crazy. Yeah, Scorpion fans, which is your current show, it's yeah. CBS. Well, it's a, we just finished just the finished fourth the season, season, so right. we don't know if we'll get another season. But. Okay, but that's a very different fan base than Smash. It's very different. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure they're, I don't they're like the Scorpion maybe fans maybe less have... critical. I feel like Smash fan Broadway fans love their stuff and yeah. they love their knowledge of Broadway. Although Scorpion fans are insane about Scorpion. You know, they're okay. like very, very protective of. Scorpion and I don't know that they care much about Smash. I have no idea, but <laughs> right. all I know is they care about Scorpion. So. Right. So you're in uh, Waitress through June seventeenth. June seventeenth. Okay. That's a, that's kind of a short run. I mean, we would love it's you a to. Ten, it's about ten weeks. I mean, they I was they wanted me to go like till the last second possible, but yeah. if I go back on season five. I have to give myself like two weeks to just oh, yeah, of course. mentally right. prepare right. to go into, you right. know, our seasons are really long. They're nine and a half months. We do long, wow. long hours, okay. you know, but if it doesn't, I'm going to go on vacation and then I'm going to come back if they want me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. I like I'll that. I'll be back on Waitress if they'll have me. So. Uh, I, I can't imagine why they wouldn't. You are so incredible Thank in you. the show. And I want to see you do more. Please, please. More, more, more musicals. More musicals. Stay, stick around. I would really like... I'm so happy to be a part of this community for the short amount of time that I am. You're it feels, in it. I'm you're you're in, in the it. world. I'm Smash world. came true. It did. <laughs> Karen Cartwright is living her dream. <laughs> exactly. She's living her best life. So everyone, I know you probably already saw Waitress, but you really have to see Catherine McVie as Jenna through June 17th. And uh, please talk to your mom about FedExing me those um, VHS stuff. I'm going to try and I'm going to have her try and find them. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming by. Thanks it's for so a nice great interview. to sit with you. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.